Hi everyone, I'm Kevin Nelson. Here's a look at what's going on this week in the news. We begin with news from the Vatican. A new biography of St. Francis of Assisi was released this past week on the occasion of the fifth anniversary of the election of Pope Francis. The preface of the book is written by the Vatican Secretary of State, Cardinal Pietro Parolin. The substitute of the Secretary of State was on hand at the presentation of the new book and after the meeting was asked about criticism that the Pope has faced during his pontificate so far. Roma Port says more from the Vatican. As time goes by and reforms advance, criticisms of the Pope also increase. Pope Francis is still favorably viewed, even though some harshly criticize his measures. <laughs> he is calm. To confront this, he uses the Jesuit spirit and the third degree of asceticism, that of being indifferent to some things. But he is a human being, so he also suffers. Some critics, besides being gratuitous, reach the core of one's being, like him betraying church doctrine. This is not true. He does not accept this, and it is the most serious accusation that one can receive. Angelo Bichu is number three in the Vatican. During a presentation of a book on St. Francis, he also revealed the simplicity with which the Pope celebrated the fifth anniversary of his election. He was calm and content, but he didn't hold the celebration. Instead, he continued his work plans and meetings as if nothing had happened. The book Francis the Rebel does not refer to the Pope, but to the saint. The motive, established by its author Enzo Fortunato, maintains that the saint's message has not gone out of style. Even more, his message is so necessary today that even a Pope decided to take his name. Looking now at news from around the country, Archbishop Joseph Kurtz, Chairman of the Committee for Religious Liberty, and Bishop James Conley, Chairman of the Subcommittee for the Promotion and Defense of Marriage, released a joint statement from the U.S. Conference of Catholic Bishops welcoming the reintroduction of the First Amendment Defense Act, which they say is a modest and important measure that protects those who believe marriage is the union of one man and one woman. The statement said that people who believe this are increasingly having their religious freedoms jeopardized and even forfeited. They added that faith-based charitable agencies and schools should not be excluded from participation in public life by loss of licenses, accreditation, or tax-exempt status because they hold reasonable views on marriage that differ from the federal government's view. They said the Catholic Church's leadership will continue to promote and protect the natural truth of marriage as foundational to the common good. In June of 2015, in a 5-4 decision, the U.S. Supreme Court, Court declared that same-sex couples have the right to marry in all 50 states. In news from around the world, theoretical physicist Stephen Hawking passed away March 14th at the age of 76. Even though he expressed his unbelief in God, he was still a member of the Pontifical Academy of Sciences and fostered a fruitful dialogue between science and faith. The Academy's members are chosen on the basis of their academic credentials and professional expertise, not religious beliefs. St. John Paul II named Hawking a member of the Papal Academy in 1986. The Pontifical Academy of Sciences Twitter account has regretted the passing of one of its most prestigious members, Stephen Hawking. Despite not being a believer, the scientist was part of the institution and participated in meetings organized by the Academy, like this one in November 2016. Together with James Hartle from the University of California, I worked out what physical conditions the early universe must have if space-time had no boundary in the past. On that occasion, he spoke for about 20 minutes to give a generic explanation of his theory. He was also able to greet Pope Francis, although it's not the first time he had visited the Vatican. Years before, he also met with Paul VI, John Paul II, and Benedict XVI. The Vatican Observatory also expressed its condolences to Hawking's family, saying in a tweet that they value the enormous scientific contribution he has made to quantum cosmology and the courage he had in facing his illness. More news from around the country. St. Joseph's Candler Health System, Georgia Southern University, and the U.S. Department of Defense's Innovative Readiness Training Program are teaming up for one week in May to offer free health, dental, vision, and veterinary care for uninsured and underinsured residents in a large portion of southeast Georgia and its surrounding areas. 
Operation Empower Health Greatest Savannah is the name given to the local adaption of the program, which hopes to provide 6,000 plus people in the region with care they might not otherwise be able to afford over the course of nine days, May 10th through the 18th. Paul Hinchy, president and CEO of the Catholic Health System, said at a news conference that this is a win-win for everyone in our community. The military gets their training and the residents of Savannah will be provided no cost medical care. And finally in the news, in Ireland, pubs will be allowed to open and serve alcohol on Good Friday for the first time in 91 years. However, some pub owners have vowed to remain closed in observance of the tradition. President of Ireland Michael Higgins signed the law change into effect in advance of the religious holiday after overwhelming support from Parliament for making the change. In recent years, pub owners have claimed the prohibition has a detrimental effect on tourists visiting Ireland for Easter. The Good Friday ban on alcohol has been in place since 1927 when lawmakers decided that the penitential nature of the day of fast and abstinence called for public observance. Several pub owners in at least two towns say they will remain closed this year and honor the time-old tradition of Ireland after receiving great support from local customers. Well, that's all the information we have for you this time. I'm Kevin Nelson. Don't forget, you can keep up to date on Catholic News throughout the week with Catholic News Break right here on the Catholic TV Network.